In our Lagos studio, we have Professor David Awarawo, Professor of International Relations and, and Strategies at the University of Lagos, and Achike Chude, Public Affairs Analyst. Gentlemen, glad to have you join me. All right. It's a pleasure. Good, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure you listened to uh, the commentaries, the statements by my two guests, uh, Sadiq Shewe, the group captain, and of course, Jide uh, Ologu. Uh, Jide talked about superstructure, the question of corruption. Uh, we need to engage uh, our resources. Energy is key. And then productivity, being a productive nation instead of instead of being a consuming nation. The group captain talked about, uh, you know, uh, the incident that happened in Joss, where uh, the security agency said that the, the terrain was such that they could not access it. And I did ask him a question. What then are the security meetings for? Shouldn't you prepare ahead, be proactive, know what you need when you talk, so you can always uh, have what you need on ground? Uh, let me start with you. Uh, Achike Achude, to react to these comments by both of them on security in Abuja generally, and of course the mining in, in, in Ibadan, and then of course the question of uh, 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 the, what the vice president said about Nigeria not going to Davos to beg, but to uh, uh, you know get the world to align with us, talk about things mutually beneficial to both Nigeria and the international community. Yeah, uh, maybe I should just uh, start uh, with that of uh, the vice president. Um, obviously, his um, presence there was um, uh, a good one. Um, uh, yes, uh, it is clear that uh, from what he has said, he has not gone to beg. Uh, but at the same time, we must also, know, also acknowledge the fact that um, Nigeria and uh, some of the African countries that are there are not there with the West uh, on equal footing, obviously. Uh, so you have um, the issue of uh, dependence, and I think he talked about that dependency also. Uh, he says that uh, Nigeria is not poor. Nigeria is um, uh, rich by implication. Same thing with uh, Africa. On the basis of the potentiality, uh, you know, for wealth creation in Africa for development of uh, the African continent. That, again, is true on the basis of potentiality. Uh, but the reality is that uh, when you look at uh, indices of development, whether you're talking about poverty, you're talking about um, you know, infant mortality, you're talking about uh, literacy, uh, you're talking about, um, I mean, some of these uh, social uh, issues, um, then you realize that uh, Nigeria is indeed poor. But we know that Nigeria has no business uh, with poverty. But the reality is that when you look at what is on the ground, as a result of uh, the filtering you know, and the looting of uh, the country, country, country's resources and the continent's resources, uh, there is no doubt that um, Nigeria is at the lower end uh, you know, and Africa. And if you look at uh, the kind of engagement Africa has with the rest of the world, you're talking about uh, global trade. Africa, Africa contributes about 3% uh, or so uh, to uh, world GB, GDP, uh, global trade. Manufacturing in Africa is abysmally low. Uh, some, some have said it's about 1.9 uh, uh, to 2.5 percent of a uh, global uh, population, I mean global uh, production or manufacturing. And so when you look at all of this, then you realize that um, even though Africa is uh, at the WEF and Nigeria is at the WEF, but it is not, or Nigeria is not at equal footing with some of those countries. So yes, perhaps a bit of uh, you know, pressure will be brought to bear. But I also agree, really, uh, that um, uh, the, the continent actually is the place to be uh, because of the level of underdevelopment of uh, the African continent. The propensity or the uh, uh, desire and the potentiality for serious business uh, being done on the continent by all manners of uh, actors, state and non-state actors from outside of the continent is exceedingly very, very high. You know, and so you are talking about virtually every aspect of uh, you know, social and economic life. You're talking about energy production. You're talking about um, 
uh, you know, infrastructural development across the continent is there. So there is money to be made in Africa. But I think if there is one area where I would agree with uh, the uh, Vice President, it is in the area of uh, Africa coming together, uh, pulling, you know, uh, having the right kind of synergy, you know, that is needed so that Africa can speak with one voice. Because the truth, as, as has been acknowledged over the years, is that um, nobody is going to come to Africa to save Africa. Africa must save Africa. You know? So we need to start you know, um, uh, with the coming together of African countries and uh, you know, uh, you know, with, with the leaders also having you know, that desire to want to do the right thing for the continent. With regards to the explosion, again, uh, that happened in uh, Ibadan, Again, you're talking about, uh, you know, crisis management, risk management and all that. And unfortunately, uh, it's not something that we are used to in this country, really, uh, because there are questions that, that must be asked again about the security architecture of this country, how somebody can, over the years, uh, move very dangerous materials like explosives from one part of the country to another part of the country, from one part of the state to another part of the state. And uh, obviously, people around also have an idea about what the man or the people that were involved in this uh, were doing. And obvious, you know, and you can only surmise that uh, perhaps a lot of people were being settled um, in terms of uh, maybe uh, gratification, and that might also include some security operatives. But the bottom line is that uh, our country is not safe, and that uh, what happened in Ibadan once more points to the fact that uh, to the fact of negligence by our security agencies and by the government you know of uh, the day uh, it is inexcusable what happened um and i think um uh, i think the, the, i think you brought up uh, one other issue again i'm trying to remember what uh, he talked you talked about i think there was a third you know leg uh, to this uh, discussion that you mentioned the superstructure and the question of corruption and productivity. The economy. Yeah, productivity yeah. instead of oh, yes. consuming, yeah. being a consuming nation instead of a, uh, being a producing nation like China had to turn everybody into producing people and uh, poverty uh, jumped out of the window. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, 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 uh, of course, obviously, it's very, very important because one thing we have realized again, now we know is that uh, Nigeria, on, with the kind of resources we have, human and material, um, uh, you know, and you know, natural, that we have no business flirting with poverty, and uh, the insecurity that we see in this country. Yes, you talk about uh, corruption and so many other vices, but I think that there are certain elements, uh, you know, of leadership traits that uh, Nigerian political leadership lacks, and nobody seems to be talking about that. We know about uh, the. Uh, failure of institutions in the country. We know about even the weakness of the Nigerian state. Because the reality is that when you talk about all of these deficits, <laughs> you can only bring it down to the fact that the Nigerian state is weak. You know, the state can neither protect itself nor protect its citizens. You know, but I think that the psychological makeup or the moral disposition of political leadership in this country is key. And often we tend to gloss over it when we talk about the consequences of the actions and activities of the political class. We tend to forget that um, these things, these their deficits are coming from somewhere. There is no level of commitment on the part of political leadership. There is no sense of patriotism uh, you know, among the political elites in this country. Because if, and it's clear, if they are committed and they are patriotic, uh, there is no way they will not be imbued with the desire to want to do the right thing for Nigeria. So even if we say, okay, somewhere along the line, incompetence plays a part. Yeah, you know, but then, you know, perhaps a smaller part in what is going on. Because our leaders are fully aware of what they are doing to this country. You know, it's all about the gratification of the person, of, of this, of self. So once there is a commitment, you know, as they say, once... Uh, you know, uh, uh, there are challenges, these challenges must be met, and it is what human beings do to rise up to challenges that confront humanity. You know, so if we have the right kind of uh, psychological makeup and the right kind of moral disposition, I want to believe that we have what it takes to be able to turn our situation around. There is no, you know, hard fact, there is no 
um, serious issue with generating electricity. You don't even need to do it yourself. You just bring in people who are competent, you know, and then uh, they do all the assessments and then they give you a bill. And then hey, before you know it, electricity, uh, you know, is produced, is generated in the country. So, you know, you're not going to do it yourself. And same thing with road infrastructure. But the reality is that, you know, those who are in charge of this country at various levels are not working in tandem with the spirit and philosophy that brought them to power on the basis of the wishes of the people exercised during the electoral process. All right, uh, Prof, uh, interesting. Uh, on the question of uh, leadership, uh, the, the vice president talked about rebuilding trust and confidence. He says, therefore, we need leaders with empathy. And GD talking there it says what we have are leaders who do not seem to think service. He mentioned Mauritius, very poor nation before, now has, has, has grown. He mentioned Singapore. And then the question is, why can't these things be replicated here in Nigeria? We talked about uh, richest man in Babylon, the book, where a card was brought by the king or the president, in quote, of that country then and brought leaders to learn under him who can take it across and then everybody benefits and the country is better for it. So speak on those things too. I mean, look at those things that you did. And of course, the, um, uh, the security expert talking about some areas not being motorable. He said it took, he was counting it, the battle explosion, took 10 hours before any action was taken, response time. Well, thank you. Um, the analysis is correct. The diagnosis is right. Able leadership is uh, a major element of national power. Countries that uh, have able leaders, they tend to do well because uh, the leader would uh, prepare the country in the right direction and uh, at the end of the day, development will be the outcome. Um, in all, all those countries, the Vice President mentioned in Davos, uh, able leadership is a critical factor uh, in Botswana, Mauritius, uh, Singapore. Just name, there's no country on earth you mentioned that uh, recorded phenomenal uh, development over a period of time that didn't have able leaders. And uh, the converse is the case in Nigeria. I mean, it's also clear. And so, uh, from what he said, it should be a challenge to him and President Tinubu that what these other countries did that transformed their respective countries. What can you, me and my, you know, uh, uh, the president do to be able to replicate the same? That should just be it, to walk the talk. The diagnosis is, is correct, the, the, the analysis is right, but after returning home, would himself and the president do what is right, do what he recommended, prescribed at Davos? That is a challenge that we are waiting to see for them to take up uh, moving forward. Um, and just to illustrate, the scandal in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, money for the poor. The two ministers who have ever headed that ministry have been probed. Power. Uh, Minister of Power, Mama, is under, uh, you know, uh, probe. Alu um, under, you know. You can imagine if they had done the right thing in the power sector, where we'll be now, if power were stable. Perhaps some of those multinational companies that are living will not leave if power were to be stable. Because power is a critical element in manufacturing. And in this time of com global competitiveness, if you waste so much money on a resource that could easily be got by some other com uh, companies elsewhere, then you can't be globally competitive. It's as simple as that. Uh, look at the plight of the poor. Nigeria is read as the, 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 the uh, poverty capital of the world. The two ministers who have ever headed the place see the scandal that we are confronted with. A uh, accountant general, 109 billion. You know, that one, we have not even seen how far that one has gone. We hear the rumor that uh, the man has been, uh, you know, giving some chief titles and all that uh, in some community here and there. So it, it's, the analysis is correct. Able leadership is a critical element in our development process. And because we haven't had it, it's one important reason why Nigeria is still where it is now. The challenge is, what do we do about that? Such that we don't just go to the you know the global environment to you know talk about uh, oh we didn't come to beg. Look, countries that are not strong economically, militarily, and all that they go and beg. 
There is a rhetoric to say you don't come here to beg. Those who don't go there to beg are those who have power. Those who have economic power, political power, yeah. military power, those are the ones who don't go there to beg. Others go there to beg. They do not operate on the same level. In terms of resources, yes, and we have talked about that forever, that Africa has potentials, yes. But potential remains potentials until they are actualized and they become uh, useful and they are trying to development, they remain potentials. And as some people will, start, some people will say, now potential will go chop. Potential ends, ends there. So the things to be done to ensure that those potentials become reality and translate to development is what you know, has to happen. And just to you know, add to what uh, the, the analyst said, uh, G, uh, Mr. Gide said, uh, that the, 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 he has an advice for the government, and that he kept talking about the superstructure. The president has to do what many other leaders have done. Beyond him, the vice president and a few others, in appointing people, look out for those who are honest. Look out for those who are competent. Look beyond contribution to election and party politics. When Nigeria did well, sometimes in the early 2000s, it was when the president, you know, did what I'm just recommending now. President Warren to do. He needs to look beyond political uh, patronage, political uh, uh, compensation to those who can deliver, who are honest. Because if you are competent and you are, you are not honest, your competence, everything you get, you just will fizzle out, will disappear. You need those two critical elements. And of course, those who are passionate and committed to you know, the country's development. Those are the things that will be added to what the vice president said, if, he, if he's able to do it, and the president does it, then we can start talking about Nigeria developing moving forward. We have forever also talked about the um, inadequacies of the military. Of, of the security forces across Nigeria. We see the kidnappings going in Abuja and around Abuja. I'm shocked that the government has not done much more than it has done. People are being kidnapped just very close to the seat of government. Nigerians being treated the way they have. The, the, the kidnappers are so brutal. When the money doesn't come quickly, they shoot somebody and kill the person to show, to, to urge people to bring ransom. And there is this quiet, deafening silence. The minister in charge of the place is somewhere in Portland, in the rivers, doing his own thing. Ah, that's not how it should be. There should be something much more than that. So political will is one of those critical things. And then second, the, the security forces, what they need to do their jobs. We're talking about you know, what uh, the, the uh, analyst mentioned regarding jobs and all. All that went on there and the killings. Life has suddenly become so cheap across the country. The government needs to wake up to do far more than he's doing now, so that all of those security challenges will be tackled, and they are intertwined. If an environment is unstable, investments will not come. And if all the other things, corruption we talked about, and all the other things we talked about are there, we can go to all the one and the two countries in the world to go and talk all the grammar and uh, make all the noise, they will not come. They, even if we don't go, they will come, if the environment is, you know, right. For, they want to make profit. They want to be in a stable environment. And once those things are there, you don't even need to go and look for them. They will come. But the fact that the ones here are even living already should tell the government something that something is not right with the economic environment that has to be fixed so that development we all seek, you know, can take place. One final thing Vice President said about solidarity, you know, uh, Africa coming together. Yes, uh, for those of us who study Africa international relations, we know this, that all the time that Africa has done well in the global arena, was always when Africa united, when Africa came together. We call it the solidarity norm in Africa's international relations. That, is, that has gone down tremendously in the past couple of years. Actually, after the uh, President Basunya left, Tabo Mbeki left, you know, that thing that brought, that brought Africa together seemed to fizzle out. The current leaders need to recreate that structure so that Africa can speak with one voice the global environment. That is the only way that Africa you know, will be able to uh, achieve, you know, uh, maximally in the global arena. Beyond those things you have mentioned that each country needs to do on its own. And one of these things are brought together is the collective development for the African continent. Let's discuss some more issues. Uh, just recently, uh, there was a book launch uh, by uh, Adeshino, Femi Adeshino, who served the president 
And at that book launch, this was one of the statements that the president made. He said, Buhari is a man of integrity who does not intrude in his administration or breaks down his neck to nominate persons. Against the backdrop of what happens in quite some states and a former president, <coughs> excuse me, and a former president, this is what you could call laudable. Uh, was the, the, the president, uh, Bola Ahmed do you think, was he throwing stones? You mentioned uh, a, a sitting minister now who was a governor before. Uh, in the light of what the president said, was he throwing stones? Uh, would you say, I mean, that's quite laudable and that's something governors across the states and leaders in Nigeria should copy? Prof. Before I come back yeah, to let, you. Let, okay. I'll come back to you, Achike. Okay. Well, uh, well um, you know, uh, well, people can say anything they like uh, about leaders. We don't expect additional to write a book that uh, will be critical of uh, former President Buhari anyway. So uh, he was a spokesperson and he was passionate about it. Uh, even things that were not so as, it, as they were, they were projected as, as such. So. It is not surprising that uh, you know, the contents of the book are what they are. But if one looks at what Nigeria was, all the indices of development when President uh, Buhari came, and what the indices were when he left, I mean, uh, just compare, compare the content of that book with where Nigeria was in 2015 and where Nigeria you know, uh, was in May 2019. Then you can speak for yourself. Is it in terms of economic development? In terms of debt, in terms of insecurity, in the, just name it, in terms of poverty. And so anybody can write anything he wants to write. But I mean, the facts are there for all scholars to be able to compare, you know, all of these things and present the facts to the public. Not just some, uh, you know, what we call apologia, where you just write to, you know, uh, you just focus, you look for the few uh, positive things and try to paint them, paint them, paint. We all, we all saw how appointments were made. There was a time that all, all the security uh, agencies were headed by people from one side, one part of the country, except maybe one, uh, the former governor of uh, Oshun State, who was the minister of interior at the time. Everybody else was. So when somebody comes around to say, oh, um, the man was not like that, he was like this. You can say that, but we as scholars, we look at the facts on the ground and present them to the public. Do the facts speak to it? I personally do not, I personally do not agree with uh, many of the uh, conclusions drawn in that book. The man just picked a few positive things and just highlighted them and all that. And some of the things he even mentioned, when you put the facts, besides all those things that were you know, that are written in those books, they do not, uh, they do not tally. So we are, we will read, public will read, will read and then make, make up their minds. The facts are there. The indices are there. What happened between 2015 and 2023 are all there. So um, Personally, I do, not, uh, I do not agree with uh, many of the things that were said and all of the beautiful things. See where we are in Nigeria today. See where we were in 2007. The, the, the difference is clear. Is here a foreign reserves? We have talking about foreign reserves uh, you know, almost forever. See what it was when President Bassanjo left in, 20, uh, uh, in 2007. Uh, 50, 60 billion dollars. How much was it uh, in uh, 2023? It may be 4 billion dollars. So, um, where well, the president again was diplomatic. On the one hand, they are complaining that the treasury was empty when they came in, but at that book launch, it seemed to say the opposite. You understand that, you know, politics allows you to do all of that, but we can put all of the pieces together and make up our minds. And we also know that the public also knows where the truth about all of these issues really is. All right, Atike. Uh, well, I was just trying to say that the president himself has yeah. not categorically said that. Maybe his ministers, but not the president. Uh, Tinibu, who said he was glad for the book launch. This is the first time he's meeting with the president. I was actually talking about the fact that he said Buhari is not breathing down his neck. I mean, among other things, but the fact that we have a situation where you see governors, they leave office, they will not allow the next governor to work. They want their, many, their, their own people appointed to, to positions, commissioners and all that you know, and that was what, what the, uh, the president was uh, 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 talking about, the former president, Buhari, among other things. Anyway, uh, Achike, uh, just chip in, then we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, the Republican 
in in the, the, the process yeah. of of picking out the Republican candidate to fix spying in uh, United States of America, and then of course the ongoing Afghan. Just chipping a little bit on this. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you you will uh, indulge me hopefully um, because there is something uh, very important with regards to security that I didn't mention, and it's because of time. Security, it's a very important okay. uh, issue. I know. I'll, I'll be briefly. And just what I wanted to say is that we should stop funding terrorism. We should stop funding banditry and kidnapping. Because look, the kidnapper is also a blackmailer. So what he does is that he does his kidnapping for ransom and then he blackmails. And so what we do all the time because of the failure of the Nigerian state is that we keep on resourcing these people. We keep on providing funding for them through the monies that we pay to them as ransom. So what they do is that they go out there, buy more guns, recruit more people, become more dangerous, you know. And so while they are growing in terms of capacity, we are not growing the ability of our security forces to confront them. So these are some of the issues. And then so how do you do it? But the government itself has removed they said, almost his hands. Really. You're correct. Uh, uh, they they, they, they even said that, that, the they even said yes, that themselves. Yeah. So but what to do? What yeah. will be the solution? I mean, that, that's correct. They even said that the money they get, they use it to buy weapons and all that, you know, but what to do? Because, I mean, the, uh, 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 the Minister of Interior, I think so, uh, Badaru, he talked about, uh, no, no, that's not the Minister of Interior, uh, I think Defense, he th Badaru talked about crowdfunding. In this Nabiha case, I mean, the sisters are free yes. now, uh, but she was killed. But then he said yeah. crowdfunding doesn't help the matter because it compounds it. Look, area, area, aerial intervention, for instance, let's just look at quickly so that we can move to other issues. Mm. Are you saying that we do not have helicopter gunships in the country? Even drones. It took about 14 hours from what we are told when, when they were even drones, at least drones in terms of surveillance. Then you move troops, you know, within, you know, a distance of, a, you know, near to these other people, but, you know, in the safety of the forest or wherever, you know, before you now move on foot. So these are, is it that we, the country can no longer, we bought how many 12 Tucano, you know, uh, uh, fighter jets the other time. We cannot, you know, afford to bring in helicopter for the purpose of, so that there is quick intervention. That's why because Sadiq was talking about response this, time, in, very in, slow yeah. response time. Yeah, I know, absolutely. So what has happened to our infrastructure? What has happened, I mean, in terms of our military infrastructure? When people are in danger, it takes 10 hours. The time it takes you to move from here by road to Onitsha or to Enugu, you are not able to get across to these other people and leave them at the mercy of this. Look, some of these excuses are absolutely unacceptable. It is the duty and responsibility, and I think we should stop all this. We need them to have, otherwise, what, what's the essence of them being, in, you know, be, 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 being there as chief of army staff or, you know, uh, heading the various security formations in the country? We can't continue to afford to spill more blood and then, to, like I said, to continue to resource these dangerous elements. And, 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 anyway, and, and then, uh, with regards to, like you said, yeah, so the, the, with regards to the, to the book launch, I think the prof has said it all, really. Uh, but, you know, for the president to, you know, have flowery words, we know it's about politics, you know, but for him to have the kind of flowery words that, I mean, he, he showed, I mean, during the book launch, we are going to remind him because it's not going to take a long time from now before they begin, when they find it difficult to get certain things done, before they resort, they go back to the issue of blaming the, the, the previous government for all the ills that they are facing now. We will remind him that at a time he said, that the Buhari has, I mean, did well. You know, that Buhari is not breathing down his neck. Why would Buhari breathe down his neck? The man right now, at least in the minds of Nigerians, is a personal non grata. This is my own take. This is my understanding of the opinions of Nigerians. That's your opinion, the not, 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 the don't do a holistic yes, say in the no, matter of Nigerians. So. So that's your opinion. No, 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 no. I said, I said, I said that's my opinion. No, I the opinion of a lot of Nigerians that I've spoken with. That's exactly, so I qualified it, you know, because right now, you know, if things have not gone on well in the country. Okay, let's talk about. Let's talk about. From, just like Prof said, let's talk about. Let, let's country. talk about sports before yes. because I have some just just little minutes. Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire had not lost mm. a match in seventeen matches before the match they lost against Nigeria, uh, which was a good thing. So Nigeria is on the brink of qualification. 
which areas do they really need improvement? There's a coming effect, I gather, of Wabale, who came from South Africa, instead of uh, Uzoho, who has been causing some, who has been having some uh, howlers, you know. So which areas, and do you see them uh, bringing the cop home? Yes, you know, after watching that match, I think it was clear that we are, the team was balanced almost everywhere. Of course, you know, you cannot win matches sometimes if you don't score goals. So there was so much expectation for Victor Osime. And if you look at the very first match, people might say, I don't know whether to say he was much rusty because the reality is that he's been doing well uh, for his club, Napoli. And so people expected him to bring, you know, that class into the team. He missed some very good opportunities in the very first match. The second match, yes, he provoked that penalty and that was very good. But I think that we need, you know, he needs to uh, do much more. That we know that he's, he's capable of doing more than he has done uh, so far. And then uh, for people, for you have the, you know, habitual dribblers. Uh, Chukweze will want to impress uh, uh, Moses Simon when he comes in, even though these are very talented footballers. But they are not exactly you know, tactically disciplined. There are times you don't want to hold on to the ball for too long. I think I'll give kudos to the, uh, 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 the defense, uh, especially the goalkeeper. Like you said, he has brought a calming effect to the team and uh, has it, an intimidating profile. Yeah. And so I think we're happy with his uh, performances. Very and uh, big, yeah. uh, they've, they've done well. All right, let's see how Prof. Just briefly, what do you think? We'll bring, will we bring back, will they bring back the cup home? Just briefly. Well, we hope so. Um, we hope so. The, the team needs to continue to improve. That is just uh, what... Uh, the Cote they didn't play badly in that match, by the way. It is just that they didn't get their tactics right. They were the ones who are actually to be defending where we should be attacking. Mm -hmm. But they were the ones who were not attacking. You know, it's just a matter of tactic. And Nigeria needs to continue to adjust its tactics according to the team he faces next. Mm -hmm. That is the only way we'll be able to you know, go as far as, as we can. We'll be happy. Like I've said several times, in 2013, when Nigeria won the cup, I was there in South Africa. And it's just 10 years uh, after that. I'm going to 2023 edition. And we hope that 10 years after Nigeria will be able to, you know, uh, do it again. You we know, hope so. Uh, as we expect. But we hope so. we'll all see, of these we'll uh, small, small things will just be tidied up so that uh, we we'll have victory S and success. Senegal will be a team to watch, so we should mm. be careful about yeah, Senegal. Exactly. Yeah, see, man, I said we cannot take Guinea-Bissau. Uh, lightly, we cannot take them for granted. Thank you so much, Atikude, and of course, no, 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 absolutely not. Yeah, and of course, yeah. uh, the Prof uh, David exactly. Arawa for being uh, on the program. You've been watching this day live, the Sunday talk show here on Arise News. I am Ndi Amogu from my entire team and myself here in Abuja and the production team in Lagos. It's bye for now. Thanks very much for watching.